Should we talk about Hot D? Yeah. Did you uh, watch it? Yeah, on your recommendation, I would. You know, nobody else would have been able to get me to try it, but but thanks to you, uh, I am now a part of the Hot D fan club. No, I like it, and you know, I don't know how much of the reason I like it is because I of how much better it is than Lord of the Rings. <laughs> It's hard. You, you don't want to like directly compare it to Lord of the Rings, yeah. but they're on at the same time. They're both fantasy shows. One works and one doesn't. Like, you know? And then like below that is She-Hulk right at this. You know, so it's like very hard to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they all I, have I, similar Rotten Tomatoes scores. But then you look at the audience scores and the only one that has a good one is Hot D. But those are Russians. <laughs> the Russian bots really like it <laughs> russian bots have a very varied opinion of these shows <laughs> the, the critics however the human beings they all for some reason have identical yes. feelings about these shows yeah you pointed out they're like 85 eh, percent for all three of these fuckers yeah. like, really <laughs> really I, I, it just seems like a, a a joke at this point it's like most like the of these properties get get that and whether whether or not then you have to kind of look at the audience score and you see the disparity and you make your own choices i see i maybe i just had low expectations i think they're all fine (laughs) (laughs) it's a good way to waste my life um you know i'm looking to waste about three four hours of my life a week and i do it with these shows (laughs) but yeah Hot D is just on another level. Like, uh, so we're talking about uh, the two episodes, second of his name and King of the Narrow Sea. Right, Although you, you saw, just... you saw the first, well, you reviewed two. the first two already. So now we, uh, yeah, I'm caught up and saw the second two. Yes. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think like what I think this show does better is that there, there's good character relationships and you learn more about them in every episode like you in the tension between them it, like it, it tightens you, you can feel it winding around your finger each each episode you know it's not They're... simple it's not like um you know because you could you could go from the pilot right and be like all right so damon's the evil one the king is going to get exploited but he, you know he's going to react in some way um she's going to be vying for the throne like you could kind of be like all right they're all in their place and now all the most obvious possible things happen, but no, they're, they're family. It's, it, it still does kind of feel like you get the complexity that you ex- expect from a family and you get, even get a little bit more because this is a Royal family and they have yeah. competing interests. And so in a lot of ways, it felt to me kind of like the original pilot of game of Thrones. Like remember like that really early strength of game of Thrones that's here, I think. And yeah. more so because like you just said, uh, the fact that you can focus on five characters, you know, yeah. it's not any more than that. Yeah, some people were kind of complaining that maybe it's too small, but I'm like, no, I love it. Oh, I love it's, that for it's me, small. that's such a feature and not a bug. I, yeah. I'm if you started expanding it and world building and blah blah yeah. blah, it's like well, let's see what they're doing across the ocean. It's like no, it's I'm getting that with Lord of the Rings where you have all these plot lines and you go over to, you know, one like probably five of them i don't like and maybe one i sort of like yeah <laughs> and so it's just like you're bouncing around all these plot lines i don't like because none, none of them are able to get any momentum none of them are able to kind of like go someplace interesting in a reasonable amount of time <laughs> yeah <laughs> it just like the, 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 the dynamic between um king viserys and Damon is just so great like the way they you can tell they like love each other yeah. and want the best for each other but damon's obviously like self-sabotaging himself and also is ambitious and and uh the king is is happy to like just gratify or like try to get along and you can't really do that all the time when you're the king until right. he he can't avoid conflict and has to address it and it, i just feel like in it does feel like a I don't know. There's something timely about it too. The story. Def- yeah. Um, the, the, the idea of weak leadership. I think that, um, you know, in an economy that's largely tech based, it's largely virtual. They had to shut down for a little while. Um, that it, we're, we're, we're kind of still overproductive, but we're not applying the same rigor to ourselves. 
I suspect that a lot of companies, that a lot of employees, for instance, might complain that like their their leadership is too complacent or too lethargic or not engaged enough or too kind in some mm. cases where it's like, well, OK, you're not actually applying standards here and and a good job is just as good as a bad job. And, you know, um, and that's really that can be really dysfunctional because. Uh, you know, if, if somebody is just ruling like a bastard, you know, just being a big asshole to everybody, well, you can kind of identify the problem quickly and you, you can, mm. can choose to not follow that person anymore or whatever. But I think, yeah, when you have somebody that you like who's leading you, but who is still failing you, you don't really war with that person. You end up warring with each other. And I just like the kingdom in general is like, cause it, 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 the previous King is supposed to be like 50 years of peace and prosperity. And so you get to this King who's sort of ineffectual, but trying to maintain that golden era as much as possible. But you can tell everything is the tensions are just tightening and tightening and it's because everything's apart. too good. Actually. Yeah. The, the crisis is, uh Oh, like we're start, we're starting to uh, contrive our own conflicts because we have no conflicts. Because we we have secured our legacy so thoroughly that we've forgotten who we are, yeah. Um, or we have no mission as a as a kingdom, you know. And and um, At least that's what I get from. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And what was I going to say? The um, and yeah, and just like it's just little things, just like when uh, after. Uh, well, when Damon, he remember, he's like in the war and he's like losing, and then Viserys finally gives in, and like sends help. I just love the scene where he gets he gets the scroll the 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 uh, that message he quietly reads it doesn't say anything and then just acts on it like he does it all wordlessly and yeah. just like but you can tell what's going in his head the whole time and I think a lesser show would spell it out be like damn my brother yes <laughs> you know, just like, yeah no, you get it you're like there's there's probably a little bit of relief there because he'd like to win this battle he'd like to win this war but the truth it's like he's completely dissatisfied yeah. and and resentful that ending of episode three was was spellbinding yeah the because yeah I, I love the the battle because there was a story reason behind the battle there was a personal right. reason behind the battle because yes. he was trying to prove himself he's resentful of his brother's help but he's also loves his brother so when he comes back with the, the you know the crown and he gives it to his brother and then they they have that like like brotherly embrace for a second i, I almost cried from that like seriously because it's yeah. just like you want them you want them to be family you want them but you know that you know, there's there's forces inside themselves that are going to pull them apart. And Damon, of course, uh, self sabotages himself too. And and so, they've gotten you they've gotten you to that emotional place in a relatively short amount of time. I mean, you just got to know these characters, and you're already like, oh, I totally get it. Yeah. And and they feel really developed. Um, it's good stuff. And and I I didn't think I'd be returning to Westeros after what happened the last time, but no, this is good. I mean, and and I you know, I I also think like a lesser show would go, Oh, well, if it's kind of a focus story and it's more about the sort of ro Royal drama and stuff, maybe we could like kind of go easy on the production value. Maybe we could kind of keep the shots tight. Maybe we could sort of, you know, we don't have to build these massive rooms and stuff. They go, they go crazy with the production no. <laughs> design. I mean, if you want, and Lord of the Rings brings it too. you know, no, got it. We got to hand, hand it to rings. Yeah, of power it's, for the... it's, it's very pretty. <laughs> to, uh, mm -hmm. I give it that, but I'm getting from the Lord of the Rings. I'm getting that JJ Abrams f f stink, you know, that hope that plotty, like we're going to this and then this and this, and it, except they like slowed it down. It's not like rise of Skywalker where everything's like, bup, 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 they bup. want, yeah, where they want, they, they, they need you to think that there's a story, but the truth is they don't yet have one. It, it, yeah. And it's, it's yeah. There, I mean, there's glimmers of it. Like I would say my favorite scene of like where I'm feeling something <laughs> was when he goes vi to visit the Elrond goes to visit the, the dwarves and it, yeah. it kind of like shows the aloofness of the elves and how he like this, this dwarf is like, you haven't talked to me in 20 years, yeah, like not even sure. a letter. And it's like, it's because like elves live forever. They don't have to like, they can, they can take 20 years off. Yeah. <laughs> it's nothing for them. I like and that thing too. And, uh, I, I thought that like showed some humanity, some, uh, even though they're 
dwarves and elves, but showed some sort of personal connection that I could connect with. Everything else, I don't know. It just it feels like, and I don't know Lord of the Rings lore at all. Like I'm, I'm not a Tolkien scholar. I don't know. I've never read the Similarian. I I read the Hobbit. And I tried to read Lord of the Rings, but I stopped reading when they were describing a mountain or something. I just couldn't get through it. <laughs> I was reading quite a bit of it to Gloria just to get her to sleep. And um, I was kind of – because I was in no rush. I was sort of like enjoying the language. and But we were spending a lot of time in Hobbiton. And, and man, like Tolkien doesn't skimp on the details about like the Sac- the Saxville Bagginses and the uh, – you know, <laughs> the, these inheritors that want Bilbo's money and uh, like you know Bilbo – like is barely related to Frodo, but he acts like he's related to Frodo. There's actually a, quite a bit of nice detail in there and it's quite funny, some of it, but it's, it's very like, you got to slow your whole life down to read those books. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I'm not, I don't know the lore. I don't even know if this is like doing the lore justice. It's sort of all. irrelevant, isn't it? I've heard, yeah. people, I've heard people say, well, I enjoy it cause I enjoy the lore. I'm like, well, <laughs> then wouldn't it be better to just do like, um, we, when we watched the pilot and I was like, well, I'll, t- I'll give it this man. Like there's, there's a she Hulk show on TV right now. And <laughs> <laughs> it's like the production design and, and, and the production value and the level of effort and passion they're putting into this thing is a joke. And, and, uh, and Lord of the Rings at least has, it's visually very sophisticated. And so by that, I, I don't just mean the CG is good. The cinematography is good. The, the production design and locations are good. I also mean like the camera, motion feels motivated it feels like the camera is doing more for the story than the writing and the acting is yeah yeah Um, absolutely absolutely yeah so i I feel like there's a lot more talent bringing it from the visuals from the production design from everything else but they um i it's like (laughs) at, at this point could couldn't you just make like a Lord of the Rings virtual reality experience, you know, <laughs> like come to Middle Earth, go to Numenor. Um, Cause you just don't have a fucking story. I, I, I got news for you. I mean, maybe they will eventually. I don't know. But right now the story is someday. Hey, everybody, we get bet. We all better suit up because someday Lord of the Rings is going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And uh, just as a contrast, I, I put on fellowship of the ring. Just to be like, sometimes you 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 get crazy. You're like, where was anything I saw in my past good? <laughs> and then yeah. you you of course you watch it, and it's just like you get the motivation right away. You get the humanity right away. You get the investment right away in Hobbiton, and, and then like the sinister nature of the ring and the 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 ring race coming the impending doom like it's it's immediate you know what the you know what the goal is you know what the danger is you know what the quest is and uh you know what the stakes are and this i don't get any of that it's just it's just vague like oh sauron is maybe out there somewhere and there's <laughs> people people are, are, would love to gaslight you into being like nothing was ever good or all that bad this is this is just you and your, you know, the, there's some kind of psychological phenomenon going on that causes you to not know what's good and bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> they love to do that. They, they they love to tell you like, we don't know they, if Pinocchio was a boy or not. I don't know. <laughs> they love to tell you that the original Star Wars film that changed cinema was a like, kind of blue though. <laughs> yeah, it kind of blue. It was, go- it was goofy, huh? <laughs> Or God forbid, they're, they're, I love when uh, I don't know if I've heard anybody say this just yet, but it's if they haven't, it's coming with Lord. Of the Rings. <laughs> um, or they'll go like it. Either you shouldn't, or it's not fair to compare it to the original. <laughs> I'm like, if it's not fair to compare new installments to the old installment, then maybe you shouldn't make the new installments. If you're if right out of the gate, you're like, we're gonna fail. So let's all just ag- admit that up front. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you shouldn't do it maybe you should make a new thing like game of thrones for yeah. instance i mean we just waxed i think fairly eloquently about what the uh, uh emotional psychological story of house of the dragon is there, it's there's really something there hmm. uh, uh, you know and it, it's also not like the most novel thing in the world there's a there's a little bit of hamlet yet again you know yeah. like, we talked That's about a good North story thing. man <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in other words, you go back to this kind of primal thing. I think there's nice modern elements in there. I actually think that some of the 
uh, sexuality and um, and violence that kind of was a staple of Game of Thrones, kind of like an like an advertisement for Game of Thrones, actually is better integrated so far. Yeah, I was thinking that it's not like you know the sex position type things. Right. Whenever there is violence or sex, it's story driven. Yeah. Every time there's a uh, a reason for it, like when they um they juxtapose uh Allison's sexual encounter with the king with uh um with a uh, uh, Renera I, I can't get these yeah, names Renera, right Renera. <laughs> I Renera. want to call Renaries <laughs> and and you know they cuz and cuz there's one I I think it's brilliant cuz in the book I get they were like uh Allison was like 10 years older than Renera but in this one they aged them close and made them friends which I think just makes their whole relationship way more complicated yes and so um so much so much so that when she's named queen they never actually even have a dialogue scene where where they explain why the main character is upset about that. It's just self-evident. Like Yeah. She she never even has to articulate it herself, you know. Yeah, and the it just that's they do so many things like that where they 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 respect the, audi- the audience's yeah. intelligence. And yep. at the end of the day, they don't have to be like I don't know, take out the map and be like, oh, the symbol is actually a map. And, you know, it's like, I don't know. It's just, <laughs> there's just so much like telling in this Lord of the Rings show that just drives me nuts. And imagine like we're going to do an entire season of like, you're going to eventually know he's Gandalf and that's the twist. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. And, uh, what's, what's the, uh, the dude who's kind of like Aragorn. Oh, and, uh, that was introduced in this last episode or do yeah, you, with, or, the one on the boat, you mean? The, yeah. The uh, boat. Yeah. And he's like a secret King, but he's probably Sauron. <laughs> yeah. Another secret King, you know, yeah. it's like, what, what, what is this shit? Yeah. It really feels like, it really feels like they said, Amazon said, you know what? We want a seat at the table. We don't want to be forgotten in the streaming wars. We've got all the diverse revenue in the world. We've got all the money in the world. There's no reason we can't outspend these fuckers. They looked at the competition. They said, we don't own the superhero stuff. We're not really going to be able to do that. Um, And they said, well, why can't we have like a Game of Thrones? One of these Games of Thrones. <laughs> and and then they say, well, I'll do you one better. I'll we'll go buy Lord of the Rings. Like, you can't buy Lord of the Rings. And Bezos was like, watch me, bitches. <laughs> and and he did it for two hundred and fifty million, I guess, for, for the uh, for the movie for, for the broadcast rights, and however much to actually make the thing. Yeah, is this so? Is this is supposed to be based on the Similarian. Does no. he have only rights no. to the Similarian? What what is this? What is this supposed to be? <laughs> So it, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, listeners, but um, my understanding is that they bought the movie rights to Lord of the Rings. So that's different than, you know, from New Line, I guess. Now, uh, New Line probably needed the money. That's probably what happened. Hmm. New, 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 New Line has only ever survived on Lord of the Rings. <laughs> um, the, the Hobbit is owned by, it's like. I think they have like new lines got some stake in that because of Lord of the Rings, but it's like mostly, I want to say universal or MGM. One of those two universal. I think the Hobbit was like a different st- The Hobbit getting the rights to make the Hobbit was much more challenging for Peter Jackson hmm. than Lord of the Rings. Uh, Lord of the Rings like bounced around to like a uh, mirror max and then t- eventually to new line. It was kind of like whoever wants to put up the money to make this gets to do it w- yeah. at the time. Um, and, uh, the Cimmerillion, I don't know why people can't get their hands on that. Some Either somebody owns it or the token estate doesn't want to do anything with it. So what they have, I believe, again, might be wrong, are the movie rights or, the, you know, whatever, the production rights to Lord of the Rings. Well, you can't make Lord of the Rings again now, can you? <laughs> so, no. but it's, there's these. It's already there. And it's great. It's perfect. So there's these, you know, expansive appendices to each book that that um, right. basically basically are the Cimmerillion in some way you know they it's kind of like the beginnings of the Cimmerillion it's like a, a it it does explain you know a lot about the second age which is when this is uh when this takes place it's 5000 years prior to the events of Lord of the Rings and i think what they're yeah i think essentially what they're going to do is they're going to make a story that leads up to basically as we know it as the prologue to Fellowship of the Ring and uh that's why they just introduced Ellen Deal and Isildur. 
Right, right. Um, the guy know, who it, chops off the fingers, right? Right. Lucky yeah. shot. <laughs> it's, it's one of the weird, strangest. I mean, luckily it's in the prologue. It's kind of hand waved, but it's one of the luckiest shots. In the, it's it's kind of like when Darth Vader just kind of lifts up Palpatine and chucks him down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit, you could do that the whole time. <laughs> you just pick him up and chuck him down a pit. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, so I think they're ado- they're trying their best, and and then they're making up a lot of shit. Like I I don't believe there's such a thing as Harfoot set anywhere in Tolkien's. Oh man, that Hardfoot storyline is nonsense. Going nowhere. It's nonsense. Like where, like the plot where they're like nobody gets left behind or whatever, and then they're like making uh, sermon uh, sermons about all the people they left behind, and then they're like, I don't know, callously trying to leave people behind. Yeah, like why are they br- brutal leave behinders if they if they chant we never leave anybody behind <laughs> or like yeah nobody I don't know, whatever their chant was they did a million times it just seemed like so incongruous and like i i didn't really understand what that was going on with all those those weird weird not hobbits yeah it was so it was so self-contradictory that you you were left wondering like um did they mean for me to to like pick up on that or are yeah. they just that sloppy i just don't know I don't know. I really don't know what they meant for me to feel. Cause it's not clear feel... to me who's whose kid, who's whose parent. Yeah. Or at least it yeah. wasn't at first. Now I think I got it. I think. I think the guy with the broken foot is Brandy's. Is that her name? No, Nori. Nori, Nori. Brandy's uh, dad. And then the woman. With I thought him. it was like a grandpa. Oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe a, a hard foot grandpa. I don't and know. How about that? How about that uh, five minute luscious sequence of berry picking? Oh, that was beautiful. It looked beautiful, but I, I don't know that I needed that much berry picking in my life. <laughs> Board of the Rings. Board of the Rings. Hey, I got I, I got another another name for it. Board of the Rings. <laughs> oh, that was that was great. The uh, the thing you sh- or Zach shared. Uh, Do you want to tell the people about it? <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> the. Uh, yeah, no, Norm Macdonald is the Joker. <laughs> they were like, hey, how come the, there was these podcasters that were like, how come um, uh, the Joker has like sort of a generic com- comics cadence? What if they g- you gave him like a really offbeat cadence like a Norm Macdonald? <laughs> He's like, you know, they say uh, crime doesn't pay. I mean, the hell are you talking about? I just robbed a bank. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um. You said rings of power nap. That's pretty good. Oh yeah. Oh that, yeah. I did say that. <laughs> yeah. I also noticed they, you know, some of the more inventive things about it, they did lift from Peter Jackson's movies. Like, um, the, those, uh, uh, shallow depth of field shots of Galadriel's eyes. Mm. That's like a, you know, like in the, in fellowship of the ring, that's basically the visual language of her and her like presence is like yeah. this, just this cool little trick that, you know, directorial trick they did. And the, it's like one of the more inventive things in the show and they stole it. Yeah. And, and yeah, the, the actress doesn't do anything for me. She's just always like twitching her eye or quivering her lip. And this. yeah, she feels like kind of any lady that you could have gotten. Like yeah. Kate Blanchett, you know, has this oh, like, yeah. real just exudes. Yeah. Just like mystic. Charisma. Yeah. Charisma, menace, beauty, all in, <laughs> in right. a, the, like a 10 minute span. <laughs> and everything that makes that character intriguing is is the fact that she is stoic and she is a billion years old and she, you know, she's your ally, but you don't quite know how to trust somebody who's that much more godlike than you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. This Galad- Galadriel is like acts like a 14 year old impulsive teenager and so, so like she'll just be like i'm gonna stab you <laughs> and it's just like this this is weird yeah. you know, aren't you supposed to be four thousand yeah. years old it does feel like she needs like like you know like one of those uh like dad tropes where he's like i've told you a million times never to rush into the forest without us but i want to see the trees father <laughs> just one of those <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it just feels like she's too old to be doing this kind of stuff but. elves can't trust the trees galadriel <laughs> <laughs> one of those um i also couldn't help but notice you know there's a lot of beautiful cg in the original lord of the rings one of one of the highlights was not the wargs the sort of uh, uh wolf creatures that they fight with there you know I, hollywood has a long and deep history 
of really bad CG wolves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, I, I remember that being the weakest part of Two Towers was that warg. Yeah. Which was actually an invented scene. So it was right. like, I, I don't remember that being in the book. I, I didn't get to the third book, but I did read the second one. And I remember being like, oh, that wolf battle is not in here. <laughs> warg battle. <laughs> that that chubby, barefooted New Zealander made that one up. Um, <laughs> I never really got the impression that Peter Jackson, I mean, I think he respects Tolkien and he, you know, he was familiar with the content and stuff. I, I think his two wives there, his sister wives there, I think knew <laughs> knew the content better. Nina and I have a theory that <laughs> that that <laughs> Fran Walsh and Philip Boyens and Peter are actually all in a relationship. It's a little Taika what, TT action there. I, yeah. Hey, New Zealander. <laughs> New Zealand, man. Free love. <laughs> I'm convinced, actually. I think it's one of the best kept secrets in Hollywood that those those three nerds are actually <laughs> They all made a trillion dollars off of Lord of the Rings and they're just very much in love and they all raise their children together in a giant New Zealand mansion. Um, but yeah, in like 20 years, those war- wargs don't look, they, they had a warg in this last episode. And he looks, yeah, he looks goofy as, as fuck. <laughs> goofy as fuck. Terrible. And while the elves are like doing tug of war with the orcs, <laughs> I don't know. I, um, the the opening song is by Howard Shore. So again, I think they're trying to they're trying to integrate the Peter Jackson thing a little bit. The the overall score is done by Bear McCreary, who uh, amongst many things did the score to the Angry Video Game Nerd movie. Oh, well, he's a fan of the AVGN. <laughs> I don't know if he still is. I don't know if he's if Bear McCreary follows the sort of the. the is is he a truther? <laughs> yeah, is he a truther? Is, will he be helping with the uh, the truther version of Monster Madness? Yeah. Um, but will uh, you be? <laughs> that'd be amazing. Is he is he like everybody else and had a falling out with James? <laughs> um, or is he one of these kind of diehard like leave him alone? He has children. <laughs> uh, what did I want to say about that? Nothing, I guess. Oh, just I like his music. I it, um the Harfoots are not my favorite plot in the world, but um that Celtic music that plays like every time it cuts back to them is at least a way to ease my my boredom and my pain. Yeah. yeah. I think aesthetically it's all, it's all, it's all pretty good. You know, the aesthetics actually get me through way more of it than it should because I'm, yeah. I, I'm on the elliptical for one thing. And so I'm kind of locked in. I'm there. I'm there to stay. And, uh, uh, again, it just, it compares so nicely to these Disney shows that are just trying to see how little they can spend. That you, did you see she Hulk? <laughs> yeah, I you did. did. I was thinking about this with She-Hulk. I have two thoughts about She-Hulk. Um, because I mean, for, first and foremost, this is not in in the least bit a superhero show. No. And before anybody says like like, well, maybe it's not supposed to be. Like it's it's Marvel Comics. They they have the patent on the word superhero. It's why you're here, but it's not a superhero show. And it first of all, I thought, man, imagine if Disney Plus had led with this. Imagine oh. if this was like their big first debut show. It would be embarrassing. I with think the whole, just, with the whole platform have failed. <laughs> they, yeah, they, it would have gone. Everyone would cancel their subscription. So assuming that's true, that like that would have been a really bad move for the platform. Um, th- is that an indication that like our standards are kind of like falling off a cliff? I don't remember know when what we this thought is the Black Wi- Remember when we thought Black Widow was not that good? <laughs> Yeah, it's just, uh, again, that and Miss Marvel are masterpieces compared to this. Yeah, because I, I mean, at least I don't know. There, this feels just so phoned in, you know. Like it feels, it feels like we've said it before. Like a college student had an assignment, they're doing it the night before, and they have to, they have to put something out there. So they're gonna write all this inane dialogue that they can, you know, write as quick as they can. And people are, you know, like. I, we put up our clip about passionless. it. Passionless. Passion generally, less. people seem to agree with us, but but on uh, maybe TikTok in particular uh, attracts a lot of people that wouldn't agree with it, people who think we have L takes. Yeah, it's a psychopath. <laughs> but like here, like here are the comments on our hey, is she she Hulk? Is it the worse paren yes video? <laughs> <laughs> Good time. Um, L takes all around. Are you guys even watching it? LMAO. Yes, that's the problem. Yeah, I'm watching it, and <laughs> and I'm a fucking fool for doing so. Uh, meh, the show is fun. It's 
So fun. Uh, such a bad take. <laughs> I responded to that one. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> I mean, look, if you want to defend the prequels to me, if you want to defend whatever Kenobi or whatever it is you feel you got to defend, yeah. like, we can talk about it. But this thing really. Yeah, I, I, I think Kenobi's a masterpiece compared to this. Thing. Yeah, I do, too. <laughs> um, you were saying um, on uh, Discord, it would be like if. Sex in the City had a spinoff and it was like a high octane like action adventure movie or uh, series. Yeah. But and then I added it would be like it was a bad yeah. <laughs> action adventure series because this isn't like a com. This isn't a sitcom court drama. It's 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 not funny. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not, not, it's like not clever. It's not even it's the fun. thing that it says that it is because they yeah like. I don't think the characters are very strong at all. Like, I don't really even know what Jennifer is besides like, just like, a. I don't know. <laughs> what is she? Sometimes she, sometimes she's like brilliant. frivolous. Sometimes uh, she's dorky. Sometimes she's cringe. Uh, you know, I don't know. Sometimes she's lonely. Sometimes she's very much not lonely. Um, she's have like, you noticed yeah. that? Like we made this observation a couple of weeks ago, but they really keep forgetting that they're supposed to do this fourth wall stuff. Yeah. And they, like, oh, they right. throw it, they throw it in like haphazardly. Like, yeah. Oh, she'll be like, Oh, you know, she'll just like do one little thing. It's not integrated in the show. Um, <laughs> and her like, and they, she's supposed to have like a sitcom cast with her like assistant. And then there's that like pug pug guy, you know, the other lawyer there who's like kind of like, more handsome but like he's not really a character either yeah i can't i can't describe him i can't describe him so it's like if you know if you have like a sitcom like friends like you can be like oh joey's like the like dumb like flirty guy and right. like chandler's the sarcastic one you know like you you have you can archetype these people i can't archetype any of these people right. besides like frivolous vapid late thirties people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I can like, I can characterize the writers <laughs> as maybe that as, as that very thing. Um, yeah, we were having a little bit of a disagreement about like, um, cause we've been saying like, it reminds us of like kind of inexperienced writers, like college students that were, that, that they're like, ah, I don't need to learn how to write. Uh, you know, I can just, I'll do what my friends and I think is funny. And then other people are like, now it feels to me kind of more like outdated, you know, uh, 30 or 40 something's trying to sound young either way. It could be either, but either way it blows. Um, <laughs> he, somebody said, I, I had went through the, the sort of, I broke down one joke where I said, you know, they smart Hulk said, I used to be a different person literally. And then she said, ha ha. So they kept like, like pointing at the joke. And the guy says, he said literally because he's smart Hulk. I know. I know. And I'm, what I'm saying is that you knew that too. And you didn't have to keep explaining the joke. Uh, somebody says hater shit. Somebody said, this one's good. If you don't like a show, don't watch it. Lol. It's not hard. I love she Hulk. It's like the comic. I'm like, well, one is not allowed to try and then review and critique a show. Like, and w w wouldn't a different person tell me like stick with it or give it more of a try. I don't know. Yeah. It's like, Oh, like it won't come together until you see everything. Right. Some people would say that the, 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 the most important comment of all the CG is good. I am. And a lot of people worked hard on it. Like myself, it sucks to see my work disparaged like this <laughs> by us. Yeah, well, <laughs> by our no. little TikTok. You know, it's not good. It looks bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> it just it just it's it's it takes me out every time i see her and like i think they try to like frame shots so that they can like insert her in so whenever she's as she hulk yeah. it looks weird like the framing looks weird it's like static and back <laughs> the obvious like, thing to have done was would be to um have a giant lady and do a deep fake or something along those lines. Um, you certainly yeah. don't have to, you, you don't have to uh, CG in green. You can paint her green. Yeah. Or something. You could, you could do something. You could do something. I, I don't, I don't think this is, yeah. Cause the hair doesn't work either. Cause that looks really fake. And I don't know. Well, mm. that's, I guess that's she Hulk. I mean, it's, uh, you know, at this point we've got 
four more of these things to go. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It keeps going, this thing. And Lord oh. of the Rings, too. I think Lord of the Rings is eight, and I want to say House of the Dragon is ten. Yeah, that's, that sounds correct. So that's, and then Andor starts, like, next week. Oh, that starts next week? Yeah. No, this is this is the Star Wars that's supposed to be for adults. Do you see that? Do you <laughs> well, see that? Then, let's review it as such, shall we? <laughs> And so if, if if we criticize it and they say uh it's a baby show for children and we can be like no no <laughs> they said they intended this one for the i adults. think we should go I, I think we should go the other way i think that if if we hear anybody slag it off we should say <laughs> it's for kids <laughs> <laughs> just like george lucas said do we turn into Nicolas Cage? <laughs> it's, it's for, for kids. kids. I told you it was for kids. I, I could eat peach for hours. I love that movie. Vampire's <laughs> Kiff. That's such a good movie. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Subscribe to Red Cow Entertainment on Patreon for full episodes every other week.